Plusle is a horrible Pokemon competitively. My favorite. There's absolutely no reason to use this thing over any other electric type, but here's the best it can do. It has a base 85 special attack that strikes fear into opponents along with 95 speed. It has the hidden ability Lightning Rod, which boosts special attack by one stage if you're hit by an electric attack and makes you immune to it, which is helped by the fact that no one really remembers this. It also gets access to Encore to try to give itself an opening to double its special attack with Nasty Plot. And then it's time to fire off some Thunderbolts, and it can also use Grass Knot for coverage against ground types. Overall, you definitely should not use Plusle, but I did it so that you don't have to. So look, today we're going where no man has gone before, and that is bringing Plusle to a game. Not only that, but trying to see if we can get it to actually do something. If that sounds interesting to you, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so first of all, my opponent has quite the scary team, especially considering my two offensive threats come in the form of Plusle and Cricketune. So we're gonna see what we can make happen here. Anyway, I decided to lead off with the Bronzong. We're staring in the face of a Meowth Garada, which is not really ideal. I figure I should just try to at least set up my Stealth Rock here, thinking maybe they just go for the U-turn. Turns out we do get taunted, and that pisses our boy Bronzong off. So we're now, we have to attack, and nothing I have really wants to switch into this. My only defensive mon really is Vaporeon, so I decide to just stay in. They do go for the knockoff. Uh, not only do they get rid of my Light Clay, but it does put me in range to where a Steel Beam gives us some solid chip, however it does take care of me. Now that's intentional in trying to get momentum and then switching in mons that I like, kind of you know, need to try to get a position to bring in. However, without Bronzong being able to set up both the Reflect and the Light Screen with the Light Clay, we're, we're gonna have a bad time. Now, at least that does give me a free switch into whatever I like, and Talonflame has a fantastic matchup here, so I can kind of pressure that thing out with the threat of a Brave Bird, and then instead expect the switch, go for the U-turn, and try to get a, a nice little matchup here. Now, they decide to bring in the Chansey, and this little egg-wielding asshole has uh, been annoying me for 25 years, and this thing never wants to die. However, one good strategy you can do against a, a Chansey is either set up in front of it or go for a Leech Seed. Now, I decide to bring in the Whimsicott. I'm 50% Cotton, but 100% that boy, and I go for the Leech Seed, which actually ends up missing, which is actually quite annoying. This allows them to set up the Stealth Rock for free, and uh, the reason why we like the Leech Seed against the Chansey is just because you get so much health back from this thing. But he has like a thousand HP, and it's gonna pretty much give us like half of our damn health every time. So, at least they do stay in, allow me to see them this time. But unfortunately, that does open the door for them to go for that Thunder Wave. And this Whimsicott's role on this team is basically just to have some support with the Leech Seed, but also being able to set up a Prankster Tailwind for kind of my slower threats in the back. Again, the Cricketune and the Plus are really kind of my only, like, offensive options, and they're not fast, so we definitely need the Tailwind support. Now, I do expect the Chansey to switch out here, so I decide to go for that Tailwind. Uh, we break through the Para, which is nice. However, this thing actually just stays in and goes for that Seismic Toss. Now, the thing about this is we get some leftovers, and we're eating good, but then also we're eating some fresh scrambled eggs because we just get to sap the yolk straight out of them and the Leech Seed heals us a ton. Gets us back to full HP, uh, which is kind of funny. Now, of course, Whimsicott does not really have any ability to damage this thing at this point, and it seems like they really can't do much to me. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe they go for a switch here, and this is time. I'm gonna bring in the dude Plusle. Now, the nickname actually did not stick on this thing. It's supposed to be named Pissle, but now I realize that it, uh, in fact, it didn't let me. So he's just, he's just Plusle. However, uh, the Seismic Toss comes in, does of course a ton of damage because I have 135 HP, but the good thing about having that little of HP is that the, uh, the Leech Seed really helps us out. So, at this point, I decide to just go for a Nasty Plot. Of course, they're not really necessarily threatened staring at the Plusle here, just because of the fact that uh, my little special attacking mouse ass is not going to be able to do much to a Chansey. But I do feel like, at least with the Leech Seed up, I'm in a position to where I kind of have no reason not to just go for the Nasty Plot, as you know, they do soft boiled. However, I'm sitting back at full HP, and uh, considering their only option is really just to uh, soft boiled and seismic toss, you can't really do much. So, it does have to switch out here, and they decide to go into the Iron Tread. So, this is an extremely scary Pokemon, especially if your name is Plusle. And I decide to go for a second nasty plot. We are thinking all sorts of horrible, nasty shit out here. But my Tailwind does go away, 
and that is bad because Iron Treads, very fast, Little Mouse, not fast. But what I can do is go ahead and hopefully predict them to go for a ground move. That's going to allow me to go for the Flying Terra. If you've ever seen a Plusle with balloons on his head, guy, it is his birthday, and you must comment Happy Birthday Plusle. He's having a fantastic time, happy as hell, but even more happy that we do predict Earthquake correctly. It does not affect me, and now it is time. I can go for the Grass Knot, and with two Nasty Plots, and a life orb that is definitely going to be a, a dead ass iron dread so that takes care of that thing and we're actually in a pretty decent spot here even with you know the fact that our tailwind is gone we're going to have a little bit of a tough time especially against the damn raging bolt they bring in giraffe raikou and here's where things get interesting they go for the thunderclap seeing my flying type however the fact that nobody has ever seen freaking plus will ever do anything nobody knows that i have lightning rod I'm able to soak up the electricity, which is absolutely amazing. I get another special attack boost, which is the greatest thing ever. And that is going to bring it to a spot where a Grass Knot is a two-hit KO. And I just took care of two Paradox, two Paradox Pokemon with a Plusle. And uh, this thing has absolutely no business handling those things. But we are able to do it. That is two Mons gone. And uh, we're on a little bit of a roll here. Now, they decide to go into the Urshifu, the next extremely massive threat against my little guy and I'm like okay well not having the tailwind sucks because this thing is literally two base speed points faster than me it allows them to go for that ice punch and it does kill our little puzzle but not before we were able to poke two massive holes in their team and take care of pretty much two of their scariest Pokemon so we were gonna we're definitely gonna take that and uh, at this point I don't really know what this Urshifu is rocking with a lot of the time you see them choice scarf uh, however I decide this is a good opportunity to at least go into the Talonflame and then as I'm looking at the matchup, I'm thinking, okay, what is my win condition here? And sadly enough, it might even be Cricketune. We're going to have to see. So they decide to switch that thing out. It's likely Choice Scarf stuck into the Ice Punch does not want to take uh, a Brave Bird here. However, I can predict the switch and go for the U-Turn. Now, the reason why I'm not worried about going for that is because I know that Talonflame can come in on one more Stealth Rock turn here and get myself to live at 1 HP to hopefully get a Tailwind up later or even a fast Brave Bird. So... On the Chansey, of course, we're going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to decide to go right back into the little Cotton Fella. And uh, this thing, knowing that their best answer is probably just the Seismic Toss, I can just go for the Leech Seed, and they don't really have anything that can uh, switch into this. So, I do, in fact, still outspeed being paralyzed, and I also do get the Leech Seed on. So they just decide to stay in and go for that Seismic Toss. Of course, with the combination of Leftovers and Leech Seed, this, uh, this thing does not want to try me bro the cotton is an absolute threat just sucking the eggs pause straight out of you but um i really do truly need some damage off on this thing uh, at this point i'm really feeling like i'm probably gonna need like cricketune to kill <laughs> to kill this thing and hit it uh, on the physical side however at this point i'm thinking you know what i could actually go into talonflame and if they stay in and go for the seismic toss talonflame does die but it opens the door for me to bring in the cricketune uh, and try to set up. However, uh, going into Talonflame here, they actually end up switching themselves, and they're going to go right back into the Urshifu. So this thing is extremely annoying at this point. Now, I do live with 1 HP, uh, and at this point, I have a couple different options. Either I try to go for the Brave Bird and outspeed and get some big chip here, or I could go for the Tailwind and enable the rest of the team. It's kind of a tough decision here. I do decide to go for the Brave Bird because the damage on this thing is kind of the most important. However, it does actually outspeed me, showing that this thing is in fact Choice Scarf. And that's actually extremely helpful to know. Just kind of guaranteeing that that thing is Scarf does uh, give me some, some good intel here. So, they decide to pivot into the Meowskarada here. And uh, at this point, I'm like, okay, I, I need Whimsicott to be able to, you know, beat the Urshifu for the late game. And that's kind of my win condition at this point now. So, what I do is, I'm going to end up going into the Cricketune. Now... Cricketune is not super great here, however, I can try to go for the Felstinger. Turns out, though, a knockoff just straight up kills me, and obviously this Cricketune is not living shit. The, the bad news is I probably really should have gone into Whimsicott. I was just going to see what happens there with the Cricketune. Unfortunately, however, I mean, Cricketune really just didn't have anything to do for the late game here. So uh, I, tried to, I tried him out. It was a misplay. It didn't work out. But this does at least allow me to switch back into Whimsicott, and this thing is kind of the most valuable fella at this point. I really need this Whimsicott to pop off. So I decided to go for the Moonblast here. It's uh, definitely going to be my only answer against uh, both the Meowskarada and the Urshifu. So they actually go for the Taunt, hoping that I click the Tailwind there. But I am able to finish this thing off with the Moonblast. 
And that is actually amazing because what that does is it really opens up Vaporeon. Now, not having to worry about Vaporeon taking a flower trick is going to make that thing's life a whole lot easier. And Vaporeon's kind of my answer against this little fella right here. Or, I guess, Big Buff Bastard. So, this thing comes in. I know that we've seen the uh, Ice Punch. I know that it also probably has access to something like the Poison Jab. I decide my only play here is to switch into Vaporeon. Now, this is a max defensive Vaporeon, and it's definitely fit uh, to handle the Urshifu. It does go for the Ice Punch, which is even better because that does nothing. And uh, Vaporeon has got his collar popped over here. We are big pimping and uh, in a pretty decent position here to where I can go for a Wish, I can go for a Scald to try to burn this thing. And while I know they're probably not going to stay in here, I decide to go for the Scald just because I can get some chip on whatever and also a potential burn. But, more importantly, start to chip down this Skarmory. Now, Skarmory comes in on the Vaporeon and we're able to do a huge chunk with that Scald. Sadly, you know, we do not get the burn, but th this Vaporeon's job at this point is to take care of, you know, the, the Skarmory here. Mostly just because of the fact uh, that uh, obviously Whimsicott's not going to be doing shit to this thing and Skarmory needs to, needs to die for the Whimsicott to have the win condition against the Urshifu. So, they decide to go for this, the little set of late game spikes. Now, the reason for that is because they're realizing that the Urshifu is gonna be kind of their win con. Now, uh, Whimsicott has taken some damage at this point and the more spikes they lay up, the more damage I'm gonna be sitting at uh, to the point where whatever Urshifu locks itself into, I might not be able to take it if there's too many hazards up. So, uh, at this point, I decide I'm gonna end up going for the Wish as that thing body presses for Literally no damage. Buddy healed me with the damn body press, which uh, is totally fine by me. So I decided to go for the wish, thinking, you know, there is potential that I can bring in the Whimsicott here and uh, be able to get the wish up, but it's too much of a risk for the fact that maybe they go for the Brave Bird. You know, in hindsight, with this thing burnt, Brave Bird's not going to really hurt that much regardless. I decide to just stay in. Let the Vaporeon just keep doing its thing. And honestly, I'm really feeling like you know, max HP and defense Vaporeon can probably clutch out the rest of this match. So I go for another Scald as they set up a second layer of spikes, which uh, is actually very scary for our Whimsicott. And this is coming down to be an extremely close match. So the wish comes true, does get me back to full HP as now they're going to go back into the Chansey. And this thing is, again, a bit of a damn issue here. Now, Chansey... I'm in a spot where, obviously with the Wish, I know that they can pretty much T-Wave me, they can go for the Seismic Tosses, but it's not going to be able to kind of outlive uh, my Wishes. So my main goal is uh, to blow up and act like I don't know nobody, but also uh, be able to conserve enough health on Vaporeon to the point where I know that I can take close combats from the Urshifu. So my Scald did get a burn there, which is very nice, and they actually do paralyze the Vaporeon at this point. And, uh, now their only real option is to go for Seismic Tosses. I do also get the full Para, and I'm like, oh shit, as long as this thing doesn't soft boiled, uh, I should be in a spot where I can slowly whittle this thing down enough uh, and take care of it. The bad news is I just cannot switch into Whimsicott here because of the fact that I come in on two layers of spikes uh, and the Stealth Rock, I believe. Do they have the Stealth Rock? Um, but regardless, I'm not going to have enough health to then take a close combat from Urshifu. So they go for another Seismic Toss here. This allows me to go for the Wish and next turn, I'm going to be able to get pretty much all of this health back. And again, Vaporeon needs to be healthy for this Urshifu. So, uh, it's also coming down to a point in the match where we're getting really close to that 20 minute timer. And while we're two defensive Pokemon staring at each other, they don't really have the option to go for the soft boiled. All it's gonna really do is kind of prolong the inevitable and it's just gonna come down to timer. So, shout out to my dude for not going for the soft boiled. I was really sure that they were going to at this point. Uh, however, Vaporeon gets to full HP and in my mind, their main goal at this point is going to be trying to get any type of damage off on the Vaporeon to open up the door for the close combat from the Urshifu to do enough damage. So they just Seismic Toss again. Uh, of course, it only does 50 damage. I go for another Scald in hopes that this next burn is going to take care of the Chansey. Um, and it's not quite looking like it's going to. Listen, Chansey just never dies. Those little beady eyes over there are absolutely evil because this thing just, just never wants to go down. So... At least I'm in a spot now where I can go for another Seismic Toss, um, and here I actually get fully paired. I believe I should have clicked Wish there, um, and if I didn't get fully paired, a Wish would actually put me in a fantastic spot. Uh, however, I'm still sitting above half health, and again, this is fully defensive Vaporeon. We're actually, we're very, we're very damn bulky. We're, uh, there's a couple fun facts about Vaporeon, but my favorite one is that we bulky out here. So, 
The final Pokemon is going to be this Urshifu, and it is sitting at full HP. So there's a few things I need to happen here. First of all, I want to go for the Wish. Now, they go for the close combat, and to my surprise, yeah, it is actually going to be a two-hit KO on the Vaporeon, and that is kind of bad. I probably should have gone for the Scald, knowing that this was going to end up knocking me out, but I do go for the Wish here, and after the Leftover Recovery, it's looking like it's close, but a close combat is sadly probably going to be able to finish me off. So I try to just go for a Scald here for the potential burn to guarantee that Whimsicott can take an attack. However, he does just beat the living shit out of me, and that does take care of my Vaporeon, and now we have a very, very interesting endgame here. Mostly because it comes down to Whimsicott doing a couple different things. First of all, I bring in 50%. Now we take some uh, pointed stones damage from the Stealth Rock, but also the spikes, and now it comes down to, all right, can I take a close combat first of all? And second of all, can I not get fully paralyzed and kill with Moonblast? They go for the close combat. I live with 22 HP. And now, the moment of truth. Do I break through the para to win the game with the Moonblast? We do. We do not get fully paralyzed. And the Moonblast does kill the Urshifu. And that is going to solidify the game. So, we could see their strategy trying to get the spikes to be to a point uh, where, you know, the close combat kills. But luckily, Whimsicott is amazing. And that is going to be the end of the game. So... I thought that was just extremely close, plus our boy Plusel got two kills, and uh, there's not much more you can ask for than that. So, thank you guys very much for watching, I really do appreciate all the support, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.